Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video we will be looking at Sperling's 1960 study into the capacity and duration of the sensory register, which you need to know for AQA level psychology in the subtopic of memory. I hope you enjoy this video and find it helpful. Let's get started. Sperling aimed to investigate the capacity of sensory memory, specifically focusing on how much information could be retained in the sensory register for a very brief period. Sperling conducted a study using two techniques. The whole report technique, participants were shown a grid of 12 letters, three rows of four, for a very brief period, 50 milliseconds. They were then asked to recall as many letters as possible. The partial report technique, participants were again shown the grid of 12 letters for 50 milliseconds. However, immediately after the display, a tone, high, medium, or low, was played, corresponding to one of the rows of the grid. Participants were then asked to recall only the letters from the row indicated by the tone. Sperling found that in the whole report technique, participants could recall only about four to five letters out of twelve, suggesting a limited capacity of iconic memory. In the partial report technique, participants could recall almost all the letters from the indicated row, suggesting that the capacity of iconic memory is actually quite large, but the information fades very quickly, within about 0.5 seconds. Sperling concluded that iconic memory has a large capacity but a very short duration. This study was significant in demonstrating that sensory memory stores a lot of information but only for a brief period before it decays or is transferred to short-term memory. Sperling's study has several strengths and limitations. A strength of Sperling's research is that it has high control over extraneous variables, which enhances the reliability of the findings. By using a controlled laboratory setting, Sperling was able to minimize distractions and ensure that participants were only focused on the visual stimuli presented to them. This control allowed for a more precise measurement of iconic memory, as variables such as lighting, noise, and participant engagement were kept consistent. Additionally, the use of a standardized procedure meant that each participant experienced the same conditions, making it easier to replicate the study and verify the results. This high level of control contributes to the internal validity of the research, allowing researchers to confidently attribute the observed effects to the manipulation of the independent variable, namely, the presentation of visual stimuli and the partial report technique. This is a strength because it suggests that the findings are more trustworthy and can be generalized to a wider population. The high control over extraneous variables means that the results are less likely to be influenced by outside factors, allowing researchers to draw more accurate conclusions about the nature of iconic memory. This reliability strengthens the overall impact of Sperling's research in the field of cognitive psychology. A strength of Sperling's research is that it is influential in cognitive psychology, as it laid the groundwork for further studies on memory processes. His findings on iconic memory have inspired subsequent research into how information is processed and retained, influencing theories about attention and perception. The implications of Sperling's work extend beyond just iconic memory, they have prompted researchers to explore the mechanisms of short-term and long-term memory as well. By demonstrating the fleeting nature of visual information and the capacity limitations of memory, Sperling's research has encouraged a deeper understanding of cognitive functions and how they relate to everyday experiences. This influence is evident in the development of models that explain memory systems, such as the multistore model, which has become a significant framework in psychology education. This is a strength because it suggests that Sperling's findings have had a lasting impact on the field of cognitive psychology, encouraging ongoing research into memory processes and shaping our understanding of how we perceive and retain information. His work has opened avenues for exploring the intricate relationships between different types of memory, ultimately enhancing our comprehension of human cognition and its practical implications in various contexts. A limitation of Sperling's research is that it has a narrow focus. The study primarily concentrating on visual memory through the study of iconic memory. This focus means that the findings may not generalize well to other types of memory, such as auditory or tactile memory, which are also crucial components of our overall cognitive functioning. By emphasizing only one aspect of memory, 
Sperling's research may overlook the interplay between different memory systems and how they work together in real-world scenarios. Furthermore, the tasks used in his experiments were quite artificial, involving the recall of letters in a controlled setting. This lack of ecological validity raises questions about how well these findings translate to everyday memory tasks, such as remembering faces or conversations. This is a limitation because it suggests that our understanding of memory may be incomplete if we only focus on visual aspects. It implies that we might miss out on how other types of memory, like auditory or tactile, contribute to our overall cognitive processes. If research primarily examines one type of memory, it could lead to an oversimplified view of how memory functions in everyday life, potentially neglecting the complexity and interconnectivity of different memory systems. A limitation of Sperling's research is that it lacks ecological validity. This means that the conditions of his experiments do not accurately reflect real-world situations where memory is utilized. In his studies, participants were asked to recall letters from a brief visual display in a highly controlled environment. This artificial setting may not capture how people remember information in everyday life, where context, emotions, and distractions play significant roles. In real-life scenarios, memory tasks are often more complex and involve various sensory modalities, including sounds, smells, and tactile sensations. By focusing solely on a brief visual presentation of letters, Sperling's research does not account for the richness of memory experiences that occur outside the laboratory. Consequently, the findings may not be applicable to how individuals actually recall information in their daily interactions, such as remembering a conversation or navigating a familiar environment. This is a limitation because it suggests that our understanding of the subject may be constrained by the specific conditions under which the research was conducted. It implies that the results may not be generalizable to broader contexts, leading to an incomplete or skewed perspective on how the phenomenon operates in real-world situations. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this video please like and subscribe for more content like this. Bye.